Hello. Let's get started with a lecture on average value. So we're going to be looking at an application of integration here. Uh, so just to keep in mind throughout this lecture, keep that idea of average really in your head. Um, a lot of the a lot of the work that we'll be doing doesn't seem like like we're doing anything related to an average, but um, we really are. So keep that idea of adding up a bunch of points and dividing by the total number of points and that being your average. You know, if you were taking the average of a bunch of people's exam scores, maybe, then you would just add them all up, divide by the number of people that took the exam, and that gives you the average value of the exam scores. So keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and get started here. So if we're dealing with a function, talking about the average value of a function is a little bit, it can be a little bit weird because we don't have a distinct number of points. We're not dealing with a finite number of data points. We're not dealing with a situation where you have 30 students who have taken an exam and you're just averaging those 30 exam scores. If you're dealing with a function, you're actually going to have to take care to recognize that your, your function is going to have an infinite number of points here. And so you're going to have to pretend basically as though this function is comprised of a bunch of points here. And the more points you put, the better your average value would be. We're gonna see that an integral really comes into play here. We, we have this idea before of a Riemann sum where that, that was taking a set number of rectangles and then basically turning all of those rectangles into really, really tiny uh, widths. And that gave us an infinite number of rectangles, which then led us to an integral. So we're going to kind of think of it the same way here. We're going to take these finite number of points here. But instead of averaging those finite number of points, we're going to keep making more and more and more points here. So you know, maybe, maybe we fill in more dots on this function. And we, we end up doing an average once we've counted every single possible point on this function. You can think of this like an average height. So if I have a function, there are some heights on the function. There are some values that are really tall. There, there are some uh, values right over here that are large. There are some values here that are small. There are some values here that are in the middle. And we're going to take an average of all those values. And that's going to give us our average value here. So let's take a look. Let, let's consider a function here a little bit, a little bit more blown up. Uh, so we've got a function here. We're going to be looking just on the interval from A to B. And I've, I've cut off the graph exactly at A and B. It would probably go further like that. But we've cut it off here. So this is just the only part of the function that we care about. And now, if we were to look at an average value, an average height of this function, you might, you might say to yourself, all right, there's a point there that's fairly tall. There's a point there that's fairly low. There's a high point. There's a low point. There's a high point. And if you wanted to just get a very rough estimate of what the average y value of this function was, you could just take these five points and you could average them. You could just add them up, divide by five, and there you go. You'd have a, a very rough estimate of what the average y value is. If you wanted to get a better approximation, maybe you add more points in here. Or maybe you add even more. Maybe we just keep adding points until we have so many points that we're that our average is just going to be, you know, it's going to take a lot of work, right? We have a lot of points here that we wanted to average. And what we're averaging is the y value. So every single one of these points has an x and a y. There's an x and a y, and then so on. And so if we were averaging these y values, you can think of it as just individual heights. And so basically what, what we're doing when we calculate the average value of a function, which we've actually yet to see how we're going to calculate the average value. But once we see how to calculate the average value, what we're doing here is we're basically taking the lengths, all of these purple lengths, and we're just averaging them. We're just doing a, a normal average calculation. And whatever these, whatever these purple lengths are, that's, that's what we're averaging. Now, obviously, the more purple lengths that you have in here, the better your average is going to be. And that's where an integral will end up coming into play, because an integral is basically going to pretend like we have an infinite number of these purple lengths in here, just as tightly packed as you can get. 
So this is what we've got here, starting off with this graph. You could probably tell just by guessing, just by kind of looking at it, that the average value of the function, the average height is right here. This blue dashed line shows me exactly what that average is. You can see if I were to take all of these heights that I'm going to highlight in the red here, if I were to take all of these highlighted red lengths and I were to average them, I'm going to get roughly something that's as long as uh, this, this blue dashed length right there. I'm going to get something that's roughly this long right there. And so this is roughly the average value. It's roughly the average height of the function. If you were to take all the y values for this function, you averaged them, this is what you'd get. And so what we can see here is we can actually set up an integral and we can relate it to, an, to another area here. So let's switch over to this graph. So I've got in green, the integral of the function. And then I've got in the blue dashed rectangle. That's just a rect. That's just exactly that, a rectangle. It has a width of B minus A and it has a height of f average, which we've stated before is that average value of the function. We have yet to find the average value, but if we knew what that was, then we'd have that area of the rectangle. And hopefully what you can see here is that obviously we have some portions that are, that are different among these, uh, among these two regions, among the rectangle and then the green integral, because the, the green will, will be our integration there. I'll go ahead and mark that in purple. And so as so so as we're as we're talking about, we've got these areas here that are a little bit different. And you'll notice that these three areas that I'm referencing first, those are counted by the int integral, by the integration, but not by that blue rectangle. And then likewise, there's some areas here that are counted in the blue rectangle area, but they're not counted when you do the integration. And these actually perfectly cancel out. And this should make sense because we're dealing with an average value. If I were to take, let's say this height, so I were to take this Y value right here, and I were to take this Y value here, if I average those, that's just the same as me just having two rectangles that are right at that height. And so what we're saying here is if I take all of these lengths that go to the function and I just sort of, if I just squished them, if I just kind of took, took my hands right here and right here and I just squeezed them right down, squeezed the function, it would just look like a flat line right here. And that might be a good, a good way for you to think about this average uh, this f average value that we've got. It's kind of like I just take the function and I just put it in, in inside of like a compressor and I just kind of take these walls and I just push them in and push them in. And then all of a sudden, all of these just get squished down. These get squished up and so on and so forth. And we end up just having this flat line straight across. And what it means is that the area in the green has to equal the area in the blue dashed rectangle. So we, we recognize that we have our integral that's colored in the green. I, I've labeled it in the purple here. And we've got the area of the rectangle as F average multiplied by B minus A. And we've said those have to be equal. So if I take F average and I multiply it by that B minus A, this is my rectangular area. And this is my integral. That's that green area. Well, we're trying to find F average. So why don't we just divide both sides by B minus A? And so what we'll say here, this B minus A is always going to be a constant because A and B are both constants. So we leave it right outside the integral and we've got that the average value of a function, the average height of a function is just given by one over B minus A multiplied by the integral from A to B of that function. So let's go ahead and look at an example here. So I'm going to give us an interval and I'm going to give us a function. So my interval is one to square root of ln of two. 
my function is x e to the x squared. So I'm not going to bother graphing this function because it's pretty ugly and it looks looks pretty bad. And this isn't something that I would expect anyone to know how to graph off the top of their head. But what we can do is we can actually go ahead and we can say, all right, so the average value here is given by 1 over b minus a integral from a to b of f of x dx. And if we plug in for b and a, we'd have square root of ln 2 minus 1, integral from 1 to square root of ln 2 of x e to the x squared dx. And just to, just to make our work a little bit more clean and concise, I am just going to deal with this integral for now. Um, I, I'm going to just evaluate this integral, and then I'll just continue on with this work and just plug it in. So let's deal with that integral. And we'll notice that we're going to have to do a substitution here. So we're going to have the integral from 1 to square root of ln 2 of x e to the x squared dx. And we're going to try a u sub here. So let's try u equals x squared. In this case, du would be 2x dx. So I'd have 1 half du is equal to x dx. And I note here that I've got my x dx right there. And so that'll go away nicely. What we can't forget to do is we can't forget to change our limits, our limits of integration. So if I were to plug in one into my equation for that relates u and x, I would also get one. And if I were to plug in the square root of ln of two, I would get square root of ln of 2 squared, which is just ln of 2. So my limits of integration have changed as well. We have our 1 half from the 1 half du that I underlined in the red. We have our integral from 1 to now ln 2, because we've changed that x equals ln 2 into u excuse me, we've changed x equals root ln of 2 into u equals ln of 2. And also the 1 just stayed the same by coincidence. We end up having e to the u du. And this is, this is a simple integral that, that we can go ahead and do. So at this point here, we've got 1 half. The integral of e to the u is just e to the u. And we're going to evaluate it at ln of 2 and at 1. And so we have 1 half e to the ln 2 minus 1 half e to the 1. e to the ln 2, the e and the natural log cancel. So we just get 2 for that. And then e to the 1 is just e. So we have 1 minus, I'll just go ahead and write e over 2. And that right there is not our average value, but it's going to be our it's going to be our integral value there. So what we can do is we can just come right back here. We could just plug right in and we'd have our answer, right? We've got our integral right there in the blue. And so what you'll see is I, I, I've done this right here. We've got our one minus E over two. And I've just taken the one over B minus A, which we've got that right there. I've now plugged in the integral right there. And then just simplifying, just writing it as one nice, neat fraction. That's our answer. It looks ugly, but it's a value. It's a number. And if you wanted to, you could plug it into a calculator and see exactly what that is. Um, but that's our answer. And that is our average value. So this, if you took all of the heights of this function on this interval, this would be the average height right there. And you could you could surmise that this has a lot of a lot of applications here, um, in, in not only just in business applications, but really in anything. If you wanted to if you wanted to find the average of any sort of function that you had, maybe you have a function that describes exam scores for a class. Maybe you have a function that describes the uh, height of people in a certain country. Uh, maybe you have the a, a function that talks about the certain stock price 
uh, of something. And so it, that would that would indicate the value of the stock. You could you could find average values here, and that would that would really give you a good sense of what all of those averages exactly were. So we'll go ahead and leave that there. We've done our nice example there. You notice it's fairly straightforward. It's just this other formula with a little bit behind that formula as opposed as opposed to why it, it is what it is, setting up our uh, rectangles and our integral areas there and equating them. But it's really just this formula and that and that gives us the average value, the average height of a function. So we'll go ahead and leave it there.